Hey, hey, this is Paula with Meditation Amsterdam, and I am here by making video number 50 for this little channel, which nobody ever watches. Um, but uh, I've considered this now a bit more of a, um, almost like a little journal for myself. And um, I have this silly romantic idea that at some point I'll reveal this channel to my lovely nephew and have him watch all these things, see what a crazy uncle he's got. Um, and um, today I want to talk about uh, one concept that is to me, um, it's almost like bedrock when it comes to this, this whole idea of self-cultivation. And I learned it from this l very small book called Mind Over Matter by Shi Ming, in which, in which he describes what he calls higher martial arts. And I thought this was a fascinating little book. It's probably one of the best books I've read so far because it goes into the discussion of what what are higher martial arts versus uh, just you could call regular martial arts. So <clears throat> let's start with with discarding with the regular martial arts. So regular martial arts you could you could consider something like MMA for example and the objective of MMA is to be a su superior in combat as um, as quickly as possible, you want to be as effective as possible and be able to counter and overcome as many different um, uh, styles and as many different opponents as you can. And the way that it is trained is so you, you trained how to, you know, you learn footwork, you learn grappling, you learn, um, you know, how to punch properly and kick and how to defend yourself and you and you um, um, cultivate a very uh, a very strong body, very fast body, and a lot of trickery and techniques in order to to come out on top. Right. So so you are concerned with how effective you are in the environment of combat. Um, in higher martial arts, or what you could describe really as kung fu, uh, which is not only referring to fighting or or martial context, but has a wider context. What you're trying to cultivate is what Shi Ming describes as the refinement of consciousness. And I had never heard it put so, so clearly, but essentially what it is, is you are <clears throat> performing movements with uh, a very high degree of mindfulness and you are doing breath work and you are doing meditation. And these three, they start to create a kind of upward spiral and they inform one another, right? So, so the better you get at breath work, in other words, the more steady and subtle your breath becomes, the better your meditation becomes. The better your meditation becomes, your movement can be more conscious and refined and there's more uh, perception of your movement. Uh, you are more able to penetrate your body with your mind, so to speak. The more your movement becomes educated, guess what? That means that you are able to physically refine your breath even more, but also you are able to stabilize your mind even more. So, so the three of them are constantly informing one another and this upward spiral starts to, um, starts to take place. But the reason that I find this so, um, so interesting is because essentially, I mean, you could call them higher martial arts. Really what they are is yoga. Um, it just, it is applied in a different context and you um, train your body for a bit of a different purpose. So while yogis <clears throat> want to uh, elongate the body a bit more perhaps and create more supple, a more supple nature, in higher martial arts, you cultivate the body so that through that, that cultivation of mind, it also has a martial application so that in, in combat, you learn to react in certain ways. The yogi is not, trained, is not concerned with combat whatsoever. It is, it is not the way they, the, it's not the proof of the pudding for them. The, the proof of the pudding in yoga is very high states of mind, right? very high states of consciousness. In martial arts, um, you also reach high states of consciousness 
but the proof of the pudding is whether you can bring them to bear in what is a, a, a highly violent or tense uh, situation in which you are subjecting yourself to stress to, to show that in fact you are um, in a higher state of consciousness or that you've, you've learned to deal with outward stress. Um, in, the, um, in the Bhagavad Gita, the Prince Arjuna is said to be able to uh, engage into full-on battle uh, so he's in the battlefield and he never loses his samadhi, meaning that his higher state of awareness has become so embodied, so entrenched, so deep and so stable that he is able to stay in meditative bliss, if you will, even in the midst of combat. So that, that's how advanced he is in, in the training of his own mind. And so that's what we're looking for in, in higher, higher martial arts, such as Tai Chi Chuan. Now, um, I find the idea of the refinement of consciousness to be the most compelling um, and the most descriptive way in, in what we call self-cultivation. Because <clears throat> what Xi Ming explains is that you are almost, you're doing like a pincer move with, with your being. You are working on yourself top down through meditation, so from the mind into the body, and you are working, you're, you're, you're improving yourself bottom up by refining bodily movements and so on, and through bodily refinement, the mind becomes refined as well, and in between to link them both, you have the breath, so that the chi is moved by the breath, if you will, and, and both those start to come together, and what ends up happening is in fact yoga, in which your being uh, starts to become like this very integrated um, system. Uh, now the integration is rough at first and a little bit weak and flimsy, but the more you work on this, the integration starts to become deeper. But also your consciousness becomes refined in the sense that you are able to attain ever more stable states of mind, ever more subtle and more perceptive states of mind. One of the things that I've noticed in the past uh, year or so where I've been practicing Tai Chi in combination with meditation and breath work is that the, the bandwidth and stability of my perception of daily life has become much more deep and much more interesting and, and subtle and rewarding. So that um, it, whereas we normally tend to think that it is the variety and intensity and um, of, of external situations that, that makes up for, for a happy and, and, and rich life. What makes for a rich life is, is the depth and stability with which we can enter any given situation. <clears throat> so that you would see, for example, a master practicing the tea ceremony and every single movement is utterly conscious and delicate and subtle um, and there's no break in his in his samadhi just like arjuna right like there's there's no break in the stability and depth of awareness that he can bring to bear and um and that that is what makes for a very rich and interesting and, and happy life as a matter of fact so to me this is also interesting because very often we hear of people who will say like uh, for example i'm a i'm a painter as you can see so i i like i like painting and i could have gone in the direction of saying wow you know uh, painting uh, is, is the ultimate thing for me because it, it makes me very relaxed and I go very deeply into it. And somebody else will say like, oh, that's all good and great about painting. But for me, it really is music. You know, to me, when I, when I grab the cello and I go so deeply into it and I feel this and that, and somebody else will tell you that for them is singing or bass jumping or whatever, whatever, whatever. But what is interesting behind all these is don't, don't look at all the flavors of the rainbow. Find the common thread. What is the commonality of what different activities bring to different people when, when, um, when you sort of, um, how would you call it? So, so you want to distill the, the essence of what we're doing. The essence of what we're doing is we're taking a given activity such as base jumping or, or, or climbing or painting or whatever, and we are going very deeply into it so that we become ever more perceptive, ever more perceptive. So our, our ability to perceive nuance starts to grow over time. 
Um, it's very interesting. There's a documentary about this this Michelin three Michelin star restaurant in Tokyo uh, from a guy called Jiro. It's called Jiro Dreams of Sushi, and in that documentary, he he talks about how what makes a superior chef chef sorry is his sensitivity to to taste and smell and the texture of food. And he claims to have a very high sensitivity, but he says, no, there's a, there's a French chef who I know, and he has even higher sensitivity. So the name of the game in this entire thing is really how sensitive you can become. And that sensitivity is the refinement of your consciousness. It can only be achieved through uh, a high amount of conscious, very conscious, very slow and and delicate and mindful repetition of certain actions. And um, in order to achieve that, you need a meditative quality of mind. In other words, your mind needs to be stable enough so that you can enter into conscious repetition of certain things. And and what is interesting also about this is, is, not, is not only that your life becomes very interesting and you are able to perceive things that seem magical. That's why Tai Chi Chuan on a high level seems like magic. Um, but it is interesting because the practice of something with that high level of mindfulness becomes re rewarding in its own right. In other words, um, you start by thinking, oh, wouldn't it be cool if I become a great Tai Chi Chuan practitioner that can push people around or just like make these cool moves or whatever, or perceive certain things. And you start engaging into this because you think it would be cool to to have certain abilities or to to be able to um, have a a very healthy body and so on but in the process of refining your consciousness you realize that the practice of the refining becomes incredibly rewarding in its own right and that's then you're super hooked on the whole thing that's why people are hooked on their hobbies it's because when they are able to put aside the thinking mind and they go into deep perception, deep sustained perception, what would be called flow, um, they are able to enter a state of mind that is rewarding in and, it, in and of itself. And so, uh, so now you're hooked into the practice and, um, and then a snowball effect begins to happen in which you become hooked to, uh, to becoming um, to, to, to refining your consciousness. Now, contrary to, um, let's say, painting or bass jumping or, you know, making music and any of those things that go uh, into certain flavors of how your consciousness is eventually refined, practices like meditation, yoga, tai chi chuan, qigong, they are concerned with going directly into refining consciousness on purpose, right? So, so whereas a painter or a musician would end up having Kung Fu, the quality of Kung Fu in which they've become merged with their art. There's not a person making art, but there is art emerging as a, as a, as a single thing. Um, so they, they find Kung Fu and they, they refine their consciousness as a byproduct of long sustained conscious practice of their art. Uh, what is interesting about Tai Chi Chuan and yoga and meditation is that they are not, um, their objective is not to create um, a certain uh, piece of art or a certain whatever, but the, the body mind are the, the artwork. So you are the art, right? It's not, it's, not, it's not separate from you. You're not trying to produce a certain thing. But you you are the very thing and therefore um, you go directly into refinement of consciousness as the art that you're doing as opposed to the refinement of your consciousness being a byproduct of you trying to become a very good painter or a very good musician so you're going more directly into the heart of the matter and um, and you no longer have to arrive at, at happiness or state of flow by coincidence or because you learned to kind of how to tap into it but 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 creating the state of flow is the practice that is what you do and and eventually it ends up in you uh, your body mind having the ability to do very interesting things and 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 you being very um very happy and very healthy but that is 
So whereas in, in regular arts and sports and, and things that are practiced on a high level, you, um, you gain abilities and as a byproduct, you achieve flow. In Tai Chi Chuan and, and Qigong and meditation, you learn to achieve flow and refine conscious, refining consciousness is the primary concern. And as a byproduct, the piece of art, which, which is what you are uh, as, as a mind body, results in, in, in uh, you know, very interesting things happening. So, um, <clears throat> so I, I suppose that um, to me, this, this is really hitting the nail in the head when it comes to uh, why these things are so rewarding and why they, they are to be picked up, uh, I think, you know, in a, in a humorous, but also in a very serious and consistent way by anyone who is interested in, in living a ha happy and rewarding and rich and, 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 and good life, if you will, because it, it goes to the very essence of what it is to being human and, and, and even to transcending your humanity and, and really just becoming consciousness and, and a very refined mode of consciousness uh, at that. And, and it cuts away the guesswork. It, it is methodical, it is scientific, it absolutely works. And, um, and many people have, have engaged into these kind of things, but you know, I, I have heard it said, and, and I think it's, it's, an, it's utterly ignorant to say this kind of thing, it's pretty harsh, but I have heard it say by yoga teachers that they will tell you, you know, it is that I don't know what, I don't know what it is. It is that mysterious thing that every day keeps us coming back to the mat, you know? And I think like, well, why is not mysterious at all? Like if, 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 if you deal in mystery, it means you don't understand what it is that you're doing and why it works and how to twiddle the knob so that it works better every time, right? I want to know. Um, <clears throat> one of the reasons that um, I started to, to, to make art that seemed to be, you know, fairly, fairly good uh, uh, relatively quickly is because I, you want to dissect things into understandable, manageable elements. So that if you look at a painting, you could describe it in terms of, oh, this, you know, captures the soul very well. And it, and it is a very, uh, you know, psychologically whatever, or, uh, oh, it reminds me of this and that. And, you know, try to achieve a piece that really touches on the sense of freedom. Well, how the hell are you going to do that, right? It's, it's like what you could try, but the odds are very badly stacked against you if you start with those fussy concepts of like, oh, what keeps me coming to the mat is that mysterious, I don't know what. Whereas if you are very uh, mundane in dealing with line and a shade that has five levels from white to black, for example, and the way you manage, you know, the way your lines intersect in a very specific way, you start to build a scaffolding with easy to understand, manageable, mundane, discrete elements. And that is what yoga is trying to do. That is what Tai Chi does. That is what meditation does. That the states of mind that start to become available to you are impossible to describe and incredibly interesting and high and uh, spiritual, for lack of a better word. That is all true. But don't try to affect things at that level. You can't. You're dealing, those are, those are not causes. Those are results. They are, they are um, at, the, at, the, at the level of, of effects. And they're, they're too complex for you to manipulate or even try to understand. So you can, you can let those be. What you do is you work like a little ant every day, you know, very consistently just chopping, you know, just chopping rocks, right? Chopping wood doo, 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 in a very specific, very mindful, very discreet way. And that is, that is how you work on the refinement of consciousness and the states of mind um, that, that you start to create consistently are incredibly interesting. I mean, um, <clears throat> I can comment, for example, of what my... Uh, my practice of standing meditation now uh, feels like um, my entire my entire body becomes utterly uh, connected and aware, and my field of vision switches from me seeing things into me observing just raw uh, abstract input. Right, things disappear. The, I I see raw raw abstract 
input uh, of light. And my brain starts to do all, you know, hallucinating all kinds of different things, trying to make sense of, of, of what's out there. So that the thinking mind has completely shut down. The, the view of the field of vision is totally abstract, totally pristine, incredibly beautiful. But I'm not trying to create that, you see. Because then I would be thinking and then I would be going to, to try and call, to try an effect, to make effects and, and, and make fireworks happen. What I'm doing is I'm sticking to the method as closely as possible, going deeply into my body and, and, and trying to uh, cultivate all the right conditions in, in what you call standing meditation or, or standing posture for Tai Chi. And then the fireworks start to, to, to happen uh, on, on the mental uh, level of things. But that is an effect. I'm, I'm not trying to do that on, on purpose, although it happens and it happens now very consistently. What, what would have been like a, a single peak of a state of flow of one second every two years has now become a daily mode into, my, into which my mind enters that also starts to cascade throughout the rest of the day and inform the rest of the day. So, um, but we deal with, with manageable, very tangible, easy to understand, mundane and, and describable causes. And, and then we start to refine consciousness and then consciousness starts to become refined and you start to um, experience it, that the meditative mind and you start to go deeper into your, into your center and your sense of self and all these interesting things. So that was a video about the refinement of consciousness as the one, as the, as the game to me, that is the ultimate game in town. You want to refine your consciousness. That's what you want to do. That's what you want. To, that's why you want to meditate. You meditate so that you have enough stability of mind to go deeper into things and then make them much more interesting and uh, and make yourself uh, perhaps more interesting in the process and more peaceful and happy. Hopefully, so I hope that helps. I'm going to uh, read much more into this kind of thing um, because to me. Um, you know, I've tried in many ways to describe uh, what is the difference between self-improvement and self-cultivation or self-realization. To me, self-cultivation and self-realization are about the refinement of your consciousness so that higher states of consciousness can be uh, achieved and sustained and the, the states become traits that you embody over time. Uh, that is not going to be brought about through learning more knowledge, although knowledge about these things informs your practice of course but it's not about more education it's not about putting more content in your brain it's not about becoming more uh, emotionally intelligent although that's all good all that stuff is good but this is something else this is about going straight to the refinement of consciousness and that's what we are trying to um, go for i hope that helps and i'll be back with more videos cheerio